Okay, into the office, which we call the studio. Studio. French doors, 40 foot container with 24 foot converted to a studio and office. So today we're going to put in four E-Flex batteries from Fortress. The fourth one is yet to arrive, but it will be here soon. We're gonna prepare for four. This is her studio, her office, if you will, with her computer and her meditation space and her quiet space. Under this twin bed is an AGM battery bank that is that has aged out. So I'm going to replace it today with four E-Flex batteries. Stupid trim shit. Okay, we have 24 AGM batteries. Oh, the pillow fell over. Forgot about that one. 24 AGM batteries, and they will be replaced with four 100 amp hour E Flex batteries. This 2400, this 24 battery bank is 1200 amp hours which is way larger than it needs to be, and they're also old. So time to replace them. Let's get started. 24, uh, 1200 amp hour, two volt cells. Yes, that's what we have here. I didn't remember if it's six volt or two volt. Oh, these are two volt cells. These were used from a customer that had them for eight or nine years, and I just deployed them here um, before I recycled them. And they lasted for two years, and now randomly one of them will drop out, this two volt cell will drop out to zero or 0 0.5 or what have you, causing the whole battery bank to suffer. So now is the time to pull them all out and put lithium ion batteries, lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries here. Now you might be concerned that this is a bed and someone sleeps here on top of a battery bank. This is, it is a bed, no one sleeps here. This is a relaxing zone and um, my wife teaches meditation and um, relaxation. It's a good skill to have. And so this is um, where she has her quiet time and relaxation time and meditation time. <clears throat> there is a, there's a time and place for all moments to rest, and this is hers. And of course, it is a 20-foot shipping container that we finished out last year or two years ago, which has all the fancy things that you'd want in your meditation chamber. So here it is. And then the remaining part of the 20 foot or the remaining part of the 40 foot container is her 16 foot area of shop, um, which has her tools and things that are seasonally piled up. And of course, an Outback FX 3048 inverter powers this whole thing off grid. And there is where it lives, I guess in the hot part of the container. It doesn't mind. So I'm gonna shut this thing down, pull out all these AGM batteries, and reconfigure for lithium. I'm gonna put a battery bus here against the wall and get all the lithiums wired in parallel. Whereas in this case, I have all of them wired in series with the bus bars that I manufacture um, for AGM banks. They're a lot easier and a lot less expensive than cables. So I'll save those for when I need them if I do. All right, here we go. The physical part starts. Now, I wouldn't normally use a driver to tighten these bolts, but for expediency's sake, I'm going to use a driver to remove all these bolts and all the bus bars and do them quickly, put them in this bin to save them, and then this battery bank will be free of all of its electrical connections. So, it's easy. Put on the driver. One. Two, two down, 46 to go. Yeah. Step one is complete. Now the physical workout begins. Each one of these lead acid batteries are 125 pounds each. And so, one at a time, take them out of here, cue them up on a pallet so the tractor can take them away. I'm gonna store them until the price of lead is higher than 12 cents a pound 
It has been 30 or 40 cents a pound historically. For some reason, even though commodity prices are sky high, lead recycle value is low. Sky low? That's not a term. It's Hades low. Yeah. 12 cents is not very much to, versus the cost of hauling them over there. All right. Keep on trucking. Top preaching. It's not that bad, you just uh, pick up a battery and move it, so I'll put the foot here, an arm here, straight up, straight out, and then to the back. Okay, my heart rate's still up, but the battery sarcophagus is now empty. And it's amazing how long of a battery string 24, 125 pound, two volt cells makes. This will have to get cleared out later. Oh yeah. All right, so I'm gonna shorten these cables, build a bus bar system here. That is next. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be amazing, believe me. Okay, I built a little tray for the batteries to sit on at the very slight amount of tilt. Maybe this perspective will give it justice. So, I don't know why, but I did, and that's why I did it. So, I will put all four of the E-Flex batteries in a row. This will dictate the length of the cables because it's furthest away from the bus bars. And all four E-Flex batteries will have the same length cable as per recommended in the manual. It's probably okay. This is a classic requirement of lead acid batteries to have equal length parallel runs. We'll repeat this pattern here. So here we are. This is what it's going to look like. Okay, I got three of the four E-Flex batteries into place on the tilty tray. I went and got the lug box and the cutter and the crimper for the giant cable. This 4 aught copper. 4 watt copper in this case is overkill for the 3000 watt inverter, but I already had these long pieces and that's what I used. So I'm going to shorten both of these 4 watt cables to length uh, where I'm going to put them here. I'm going to make a distribution, a DC distribution center. So shorten the red cable somewhere using these tools and then that step will be complete ready for a distribution. Okay, let's try to film making a crimp, which I've done before. So I'm gonna cut about here. That's the, uh, the four out mark. That's where I noted it to be cut. Okay, I'm making some progress. I've got the minus bus bar started. And the next step is to figure out the first length of cable. I'll put a lug here on this negative, come across, make a nice loop down, and I'll come to here. I'll probably make that a little bit shorter. Yeah, I gotta go to that fourth battery. And then we come down, so yeah, I'll make them all this length right here. Make four of these. I'll be back. Cord. I'm recording again. Now I'll switch to red for the righteous restoration. What's the R word for energy? Mm. I don't know. I'm gonna go here, here, and then probably the exact same length as the red as the black. Okay, do it over. Lost track. Here, here, here. From there. 
Now, yeah, I'll just trim off a little bit of this one, and then I will make four red ones. BRB, LOL. All right, I had this old midnight panel mount breaker combiner box. So I've mounted four, <coughs> excuse me, mounted four 80 amp breakers, which trip at 108 amps, which is sufficient for these batteries. I'm gonna mount these four red cables to each of the batteries. I'm gonna to try to make it all fit in this tiny space allocated by this combiner, but it does fit, it will fit, so we'll make it all happen. In fact, we start out going straight here. It's all gonna come out to the left. So there's one, and it won't bore you with all four of these. I've marked cable one with a one. It's that breaker one, which happens to go to this first battery, and first, second, third, and fourth battery. Okay, we got it going on here. We've got the three batteries hooked up. I did finish the positive cluster. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but it's a midnight solar panel mount breaker combiner. So my four batteries are at the top. My big lead goes out to the inverter E-panel. So three positives and three negatives. I booted up the first battery and I'm going to plug in the USB can tool that I got from Fortress. If I can do this one-handed, there we go. All right, and then connect to the uh, battery Wi-Fi with the can. I don't think Wi-Fi works yet. Can connected. All right, great. All right. This battery has version 2269. First thing I'm gonna do is update the software on this one. I won't bore you with all these details, but after I get the, these three batteries updated, I'm gonna to toggle the Wi-Fi bit and then group them together and turn the inverter on. So, yeah, there's that. Run that update. So it turns off the BMS, updates the software, which it's doing now, 12%. And then it'll reboot. And then I'll do the second battery and then the third battery. Make sure the voltages are within a half a volt or so of each other. And then we'll get it on the inverter and charge the batteries from the grid and then we'll drop the grid because we normally run in drop mode on this particular system and then i've got to do some cable management there's a lot of cables to be managed here so so yeah all right stand by okay update the fourth battery arrived yesterday i brought it in so it can become a room temperature and uh, now that my breathing has returned to normal after moving that 108 pound beast into position, missing all the cables, et cetera, et cetera. Updating the software right now. Oh, it just finished. So I will measure the voltage, get them synchronized, hook the cables up, uh, and then turn on its breaker so that they're in the loop. And then I'll edit um, the FNDC, the FlexNet DC, to include this extra 105 amp hours. So, working great. It's a great project. And now it's finished. Well, got to clean up some cables. Look at that mess. Okay, here we go. Back to work. This should be fun with a camera in one hand and a finger in the other hand. Uh, Optics RE. <clears throat> I'm going to change the battery capacity to include this fourth battery device map. I'm touching you. There we go. Uh, may FlexNet DC, uh, battery charging, let's put in 420, 420, done, apply. 
the other parameters are the same according to the Outback and eFlex programming metrics. So, <clears throat> 420 now. Okay, I wanted to do another adjustment. Go to the charge controller, go to battery charging. It says 54.4 for two hours, 52, 50. Okay, good. Everything there is right. All right, <laughs> apply. I don't know, I didn't have to apply. I didn't do anything. Close, dashboard. Now it says I have 70% left because I had 52 or something. So it knows I added capacity. So, and you can see my performance yesterday in this studio is the draining overnight from, it's kind of cold. 33 degrees outside, a lovely so-and-so degrees inside. <clears throat> the disadvantage of having to unplug the temperature sensor on these lithium batteries is now I don't know what the temperature inside the room is. So, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, this is a wrap. Get up with this thing. Uh, I've got the cables a little bit more managed. Let me get this laptop off, uh, clean up some debris, and close it back up. All right, thanks for watching. On to the next battery project.